parenting has never been easy, but it seems in the digital age, we have more blind spots to worry about. Tonight, Yahoo Global News anchor Katie Couric takes a look at a high-profile tragedy and gives us an inside glimpse at the secret world of teens and social media. Nicole was a very lovable person. Tammy Weeks was facing the unimaginable. Her 13-year-old daughter had been found dead. Nicole touched many people throughout her short life. Murder of a 13-year-old girl making national headlines. The search for answers is just beginning. The reaction to her murder has become part of a national conversation about girls and social media. Nicole had secretly been messaging with this Virginia Tech student, 18-year-old David Eisenhower, on the social media app, Kick. According to investigators, they say that one night last month, Nicole snuck out of her parents' house to meet up with Eisenhower and never returned home. She was missing for three days until her body was discovered 80 miles away. A very preliminary determination of the cause of death is stabbing. Nicole's story has become a cautionary tale about the dangers of secret messaging apps and their anonymous users. I'm willing to say kick is the devil for young children because it's like a free ability to text uh, anything you want and parents can't see the phone numbers that are coming in and out. Eisenhower and an alleged female accomplice are now accused of the kidnapping and murder of Nicole Lovell. Neither has entered a plea. Nicole's father and stepmother sat down with 2020. I just wish I would have been there for my daughter because she deserved me to be there and I wasn't. Nicole Lovell's family believes she turned to social media for acceptance after she was severely bullied in school. Yeah, she had a huge, you know, boy crush kind of thing, but in the same sense, it was kind of innocent, you know, because she was still a child, you know, and all she wanted was just the attention. We reached out to the people who run Kick, and they told us we have zero tolerance for any behavior that potentially affects the safety of our users. We offer blocking and reporting tools to allow users to flag unwanted content or contact. We are also reviewing all aspects of safety across the company. When this case surfaced, a lot of parents that I know said, "Have you heard of Kick?" Yes, from every single girl that I've interviewed, because it's so much a part of their culture. But those secret apps are just part of the story. Nancy Jo Sales has been reporting on youth culture for more than a decade. In Sales' new book, American Girls, Social Media and the Secret Lives of Teenagers, she explores the dangers of coming of age in a world ruled by social media. Tell me about the role this is playing in the life of the average teenage girl in this country. One of the first conversations that I had with some girls in Los Angeles really set the tone for the whole book to me. She said, social media is destroying our lives. And I said, so why don't you just go off it? And she said, because then we would have no life. She says what she discovered was troubling. Young lives playing out on various platforms that promote negative self-esteem, sometimes harsh judgment and cyberbullying, something that 13-year-old Carrie has experienced. I got a message on Instagram from this guy. He seemed like he was my age, so I thought I could trust him. And he said that he knew some of my friends. And I started talking to him, and we got really close. But the friendship took a turn, and Carrie decided they should stop communicating. Soon after, she says, the boy and one of his friends began writing hurtful things. And they were saying these things like, you're ugly and cursing me out when they've never even met me or know me at all. And it really scared me. Carrie's mom decided to do something about it. It had turned out that the person who was actually cyberbullying her was not the boy, but a friend of his who he was manipulating. And she had sort of taken on this crusade to get back at my daughter for no reason. I spoke to this woman and I said, you know, your daughter is cyberbullying my child. And so she promised me it would never happen again, that she would talk to this kid's parents. And thankfully that did put an end to it. How has social media contributed to the notion of cyberbullying? Almost every girl I talked to had been cyberbullied. And they might not necessarily call it cyberbullying because it didn't necessarily lead to uh, an adverse event in their lives. But you know, the kind of judgy comments or mean comments, and that's cyberbullying too. Sales says social media has become a popularity contest where teens seek validation from the pictures they post and the number of likes they receive. She says it's having a major impact 
on how teenage girls view themselves. 18-year-old Olivia agrees. You're like, oh my God, I got over 150 likes. Like, oh, like, you know, what a good picture I took. Like, and then also, if you post a photo that you think is good as well and you don't get a lot of likes, you're just like, oh my God, should I take this down? Sale says she met some girls who spend hours taking pictures of themselves mm -hmm. and manipulating the images. We asked Olivia to show us how some of these photo editing apps work. I can whiten my teeth, you just zoom in, whiter smile. If I wanted to be super blonde, you could just make yourself look more slender. Also, I can make my arm thinner. What some people don't realize is that, look at the door. It's not supposed to look like that. But Olivia says she tries to use these apps sparingly. Sometimes my face gets really oily, then I'll do that, but I don't reshape my body. How is this contributing to anxiety and depression that we're hearing about among teenagers? Well, I mean, think about it. If what you are thinking about is, do I look hot? Am I going to get likes on this photo? I mean, this is like the constant kind of thoughts that are being raised in teenage girls' minds through their use of social media. It's not soothing. It's not something that produces a feeling of well-being or security. Both Olivia and Carrie's moms say talking to their children about their social media behavior is critically important. Basically, your teenager wants to know that they are part of the conversation, that it's not a dictatorship. This is the way the kids will communicate. This is the way life is. And you need to have the channels of communication open. You need to educate them as early as possible as to what the dangers are. Here we go. For Nightline, I'm Katie Couric in Los Angeles. Nancy Jo Sales' book, American Girls, Social Media and the Secret Lives of Teenagers, is on sale now.